Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about an eyeshadow that is out that is um, kind of new. This is the uh, CoverGirl eyeshadows. They're, you know, it's the little quads that are out. <clears throat> I think the quads have been out for a while, but they had uh, recently had new colors that they have introduced. And I'm not sure exactly what these are called because it's abbreviated on the back. You know, it just says CGPRM. Um, eyeshadow and eyeshadow is abbreviated ESHDW. <laughs> so I don't know if PRM, I don't know if that stands for PRISM. I'm assuming, I mean, that makes sense to me because these are very kind of sparkly, shiny, metallic-y shadows. So PRISM makes sense in my brain, but I don't know if that's actually correct. But the, the, uh, quad that I'm showing you today is number 725 breathtaking blues and so it looks like this and my makeup is not completely done because I'm actually going to put it on for you on camera so that you can kind of see how it performs and I'm gonna roll up my sleeve here and do swatches first just so you can see all the colors because I'm only going to be using three of the colors today so the first color is this you know sparkly metallic and I'm sorry I know that the lighting is not good again today because it's a very cloudy rainy day so hopefully that's that's coming up on camera but it's kind of um an off-white like eggshell creamish white color and these are you know a little bit of a glitter bomb the next one is a uh, sparkly silver color this one is really pretty on the lid I have been using these um, really pretty as a lid shade, but, um, you know, sparkly and metallic. This third color is a very pretty kind of, sort of like a smoky blue, like a metallic version of a smoky blue with a hint of like a, a deep teal sort of undertone to it. And that's it there. And then the last one is kind of their version of the matte <laughs> shadow, you know, that it, it's, Kind of toned down some so you could use it you know a lot of people would use a matte as a crease color but it does still have some sparkle and shine to it it's kind of um a very satiny finish and there is still some you know very finely milled um sort of sparkle in there but it doesn't necessarily transfer to the skin as much so that color is right there so what i'm going to tell you about these shadows is i mean they are you know they are sparkly and glittery so, you know, if that's not your cup of tea, then these aren't for you. Um, but what I will say is really the pigmentation on these is so pretty and the impact is really so nice and dramatic. Um, I really enjoyed using these. Now you guys know that I, I don't mind sparkle and shine and glitter and that sort of thing. So for me, it's no big deal. Um, but, you know, if you're feeling like you want to be a little more adventurous, these are, are good quality shadows to try. Now, another thing that I will tell you is that the glitter in these is, is pretty finely milled. Uh, I mean, not, not the finest, but you know, fairly small, small particles. You will get some fallout under the eye and um, it's going to stick because these are so finely milled, it's gonna stick and it's not the kind that you can just brush away with a brush. It's not chunky enough or heavy enough to just, you know, brush off. So, uh, you either want to protect, you know, the lower portion of the face while you're putting these on or put your foundation on last if that bothers you. For me, you guys know that I'm kind of, that kind of stuff doesn't really bother me. So for me, I just put my makeup on the same way I always do. And I, I like to do my face, uh, my face products first and do my eyes last or near last so you know for me I just I mean I let the sparkle just sparkle away um, it's not so much fallout of the color like for example you know the silver or this you know the smoky blue it's not so much that you're gonna get that kind of color all down underneath your eye it's really just you know it's really just the sparkle of the glitter so you kind of feel a little bit like a fairy <laughs> when you're wearing it so you know, like I said, if that's, if that bothers you, then wait and do your foundation and everything last so that you can, you know, cover up any sparkle or get it off first with a, um, you know, wipe or whatever, and then do your face or protect, you know, put something over, um, the lower part of your face to keep it off. Okay. 
So let me get these off and we're just going to get started putting these on. Now I have done um, a couple looks with this already throughout the week. And so today I'm going to play around with a look that I haven't tried yet. And I feel like it's one that's maybe a little less likely for everyone to kind of do um, just, you know, the, the combination maybe. Uh, it's not one of the first ones that most people would pick. <clears throat> it could be adapted to be used as a smoky eye look, but for me I'm just going to do kind of my um, look that's best for every day because I do have to go out into the public today. So I am not going to be applying anything to the lower lash line and I'm going to stick to kind of my um, sort of outer V uh, almond shaped eyeshadow look. And I think I am going to do a little bit of, of highlight. I, I was going to keep it to two shadows, but I think I'll go ahead and do three just for the heck of it. So I'm going to start with my lid color and today, let me take the sponge tip applicator out. You guys don't throw away sponge tip applicators. <laughs> it's a, such a pet peeve of mine when I see people do that because this is such a useful tool. Um, there are so many shadows that really work best with a sponge tip applicator and not to mention these make very good applicators for if you're doing nail art. So hang on to these. There are a million things you can do with a sponge tip applicator. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm going to set that one aside and for my lid color today I'm going to use that smoky blue color. And I'm just using for the um, shadow, I'm using a uh, flat eyeshadow brush. This is a MARC eyeshadow brush. So you see it's got some, you know, it's got some width to it, but it's essentially just a flat brush. So I'm just going to get into that teal and I'm just going to kind of pat and spread. I kind of do a combination of patting and spreading these shadows on. You don't need to pat them on for worry of, you know, the color fallout or anything. Um, but they're so uh, heavily pigmented that you really just don't need that much. So I just kind of pat the color to get it sort of evenly distributed and then I just kind of lightly blend it to get it spread out. And you really, I mean, you can obviously see this is enough. I could, I could stop here, you know, blend a little more, but this is really all that I need. Um, for camera, I might add just a little bit more just so you can see it a little bit better, especially since I know that it's dark today so the color impact just is not going to show the way it should which is a shame but I'll just add a little bit more for that purpose if I were going to do some color under the lid you know if I were a little bit younger and were trying to look a little bit older um, I would take this color and I would put it just under the lid about the outer two-thirds Okay, so I would come in to just the inner corner of the part where your color starts of the, of the eye. I would go from there out with it. But I'm just sticking to the top of the lid for today. And as you can see, like I said, there's no color down here, but you may, as you know, filming goes, you may start to see that this might start to kind of glitter and glow a little bit. I think the worst color for the fallout really is that kind of creamy eggshell white color, but you know, they all do it um, to some extent, so. Okay, and then I'm going to use this um, kind of deep matte navy blue, sort of just in the outer V and across the crease. And this color I really like because a lot of times when you use a navy blue on the lid, um, it either doesn't look navy blue when it applies, it looks like a charcoal gray or, you know, um, like, a, like a lighter black, like a smoky black or it mixes with other shadows and loses that navy that navy color altogether. This one really hangs on to that that the navy color. So I really like that cuz that's that's very hard to find when you're when you're looking for a good navy shadow. Most of the time they either blend with other colors and lose and lose their pigmentation 
or they don't have the navy blue pigmentation really to begin with when it goes on the eyes and it looks, you know, it just looks like yet another black. And you guys know that I use this all the time because this is, this is what I like to refer to as my lazy brush. <laughs> it's a, um, a flat angled eyeshadow brush. And the reason I use it for the crease is because number one, the width of it is pretty much exactly the width of my natural crease. And then the length of it is just about the perfect length for my sort of blending area above the crease that I would blend a shadow headed up towards the brow bone. So I kind of kill a whole bunch of birds with one stone with this and it's just a very easy, fast, lazy way to do it. So I'm just gonna place that navy blue into my outer V and drag it across the crease a little bit. And before I lose too much of the color, I'm gonna angle it down so I actually get that V shape here in the outer corner. And then I'll start to blend it across the crease just a little bit and this is where I'm going to turn my brush so instead of having it sideways and fit right into the crease I'm going to turn it long ways so it goes uh, kind of up and down towards my brow and this is going to be my easy way of blending it up towards the brow bone so and I just windshield wiper it back and forth and if I were going to use uh, if I were going to put any color on my lower lid I would take some of this and I would just do the outer one third and kind of blend it, you know. So this is all kind of a seamless um, kind of almond cat's eye sort of shape here. But I'm just sticking to the upper lid today. And really I could stop with these two colors, um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you uh, one more color just so you can kind of see the majority of the colors on but you can see that as I blend these together, they really don't lose their color. They don't mix together and turn to mud. They really maintain um, their individual colors. And so I really like that. They still blend together nicely. They still create dimension because they do mix together, but they don't lose their individual pigmentation. And I really like that. I'm just doing the other eye, so I'm, I'm not really going to, uh, I'll talk to you a little bit. I'm not going to talk you through it again, but I'll talk to you just so it's not boring. <laughs> so tell me if you guys have been using any new shadows lately, or if you've tried one of these, um, you know, tell me which, which quad you tried. There was another quad there that was um, a lot of purples, and it was really pretty too. The only reason I didn't go for that is because since I have brown eyes, every time a, um, you know, the trend comes around where they start doing palettes, you know, specifically for your eye color to make your eye color pop, uh, companies always send me the, their purple <laughs> palettes because my eyes are brown. And so I just find myself like, you know, it's not that I get tired of them, but I just have so many of those that um, if I can choose a different a different color scheme, I, I tend to do that <laughs> these days. Okay, so the last color I'm going to use is that creamy kind of um, sort of eggshell white color. And this one does have a lot of fallout. This is not the kind of color you would, you would, uh, let me see if you, can you guys see the sparkle on my hand where I've been rubbing? The shadows, I don't, know if you, I don't know if there's enough light today. But normally this isn't necessarily the kind of shadow that most people would want to use as the highlight because there is sparkle to it. But I mean, let's face it, if you're doing, you know, a sparkly eyeshadow look, um, it, it doesn't really matter that much if the highlight has some sparkle in it too. It's, it just is kind of a, uh, a nice, seamless, um, reflective, metallic, glittery, shiny look. So, you know, it's not like people are going to be looking at you and saying, oh my gosh, is that glitter under your eyebrow? Nobody's going <laughs> to, nobody's going to be, you know, looking that close to even notice that. And I'm using my, <laughs> my flower uh, eyeshadow brush. It's kind of like a fat one, just because it happens to be the one I have here. Oh, looks like I have a brush here I need to trim off. Okay, so I just am putting a little bit on the tip. I'm just going to kind of pat it up there and then blend it a little bit. And, you know, like I said, this is the color that has the most fallout. 
So if you haven't already seen any sparkle on my face, this might, you might start to see a little bit of it now. But and the only reason I'm doing that, like I said, is number one, so you can kind of see one, one more color. Um, but number two, I mean, a lot of you I know are addicted to uh, brow highlight um, or you are afraid to not have a nice blended uh, blended out edge along your crease color. So I know a lot of you are going to be dying to do this and, and would go crazy just having the two colors on the lid. <laughs> but I mean for, I don't know, for everyday use I would probably stick with those two, the original two colors. Okay, so that's it for the shadows. I'm going to go in now and I'm just going to put on, um, I'm not going to do like a fancy cat, you know, winged out uh, liquid eyeliner. I'm just going to do um, like a dark gray pencil eyeliner and then I'm going to top it off with some mascara and I'll just let you see the look up close. Okay, so I just have a little bit of liner kind of smudged along my upper lash line just to you know, make that transition from eyeshadow color to lash color a little more seamless. And I just put on a little bit of black mascara. And I'm going to zoom up a little bit closer. Sorry, my table here is a little bit wob wobbly. So you guys can see just a little bit closer. And tell me what you think. Do Are you interested in these eyeshadows? Do they seem like something you would enjoy using? Are you intimidated by them? I really have enjoyed wearing them. I really think they're pretty. And, you know, again, I'm not afraid of a little sparkle or shine, um, but I don't think it's too much. You know, it's not like, it's not like craft glitter on your eyes, you know what I mean? So, and, and you know, there are ways you can protect the face if you're afraid of, you know, the glitter falling down below and being all over your cheeks or anything like that. So, I, I think they're really pretty and, you know, this is... I mean, this is a smoky look, but it's still a fairly natural way to wear them, and I don't feel like if I go out in public, um, you know, that it's too over the top, but at the same time, I could make it really dramatic and smoky and, like, go out to the club if I wanted to. You know, I could um, make it even more of a smoky eye, and I could add, you know, some liquid liner, and I could do more dramatic lashes, and I could put a little more color in my brows, and you know, really go out and have a good time with it. So tell me what you think. Are you interested in these or do you have some, you know, what do you think? What's your experience been with the ones that you have, if you have them already? Um, or are you now excited to go and pick them up? Uh, I, mine, I always see at CVS, so I'm sure there's other places you can get them as well, probably, but that's where I generally see mine. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it was helpful and helped you to maybe decide whether this was something you wanted to try or didn't if you were kind of thinking about it. And um, my hair's not done yet because I'm going to, I think I'm going to do my hair on camera just for fun, um, just to kind of show you a look that I have done, you know, a million times in the past, but don't necessarily do for camera. And uh, so that's the story behind that. Um, Okay, well, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Say hi to me down in the comments and answer all of the questions I've given you throughout this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!